In this video, I explain some tips and approaches to help improve your response when asked the common interview question, what is your greatest weakness? Let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian and I'm a first year medical student studying in Sydney. We're continuing the medicine interview series today, which is all about improving your presentation, passion and performance before your next interview. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and ring the bell so that you can see more content like this. So jumping right in, we're talking about how to answer the question, what is your greatest weakness? And so this question can be asked in a number of ways. Um, they might ask it directly, but they also might ask it in a more obscure fashion. Like, for example, they might say, what aspects of being a doctor do you think you'll find more, most challenging or difficult? It makes people very anxious and very worried when they have to think about this question because you're not sure whether you should be completely open and, and honest with your response and expose yourself to your true weakness or your, your weaknesses that you wouldn't really tell people. But you're also not sure whether you should sort of say a strength and disguise it as a weakness, like I'm a perfectionist or I'm over ambitious, I'm overworking and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully by the end of the video, I've cleared up some concerns or some worries that you might have and give you some approaches to help answer it more authentically and more genuinely. So I personally think it's a good question in the sense that it forces you to self-reflect. There's an argument to say that actually one of your biggest weaknesses could be you not wanting to answer this question and not actually thinking about this question enough because there's a weakness in how you reflect and how you look into your own values and your own traits. I don't think a lot of people put thought into their weaknesses, they more sort of embody their strengths. So it forces you to self-reflect, to character evaluate and to look at what are some areas in my life that I can improve on and how can I improve on them? And how can I show that to an interviewer that there have been aspects which I've been weak in and I've got better at it and I've improved and moved forward and obviously these skills that I wasn't that I didn't have before, I have now. So I think it's actually a good question because it forces you to do all this thinking and reflective practice is very vital in um, the medical field and so I think that's really what the interviewers are trying to get out of you and you really wanna be genuine here. You don't want to sugarcoat it or say something that's not really true because it's not gonna show that you've engaged in this reflective practice. What it does is that you leave your ego at the door and you come into it being completely vulnerable but also being completely strong in your response, own your weaknesses, don't shy away from them because they're aspects when you've shown growth and been able to improve. So the first thing before you do anything else is obviously to figure out what your weakness is. Uh, many of you may have not put much thought into this because to be honest, who really thinks about what they're bad at? We wanna focus on what we're good at, what we're strong at and embody that. But at the same time, the first thing that I think you should do is to brainstorm all the weaknesses that come to your head off the top of your head. Are you, do you feel, are you impatient at times or do you feel underconfident? Do you get anxious over a lot of situations? So have a quick brainstorm in your own head, write some things down, um, get some points or try to remember some situations where it might, a weakness doesn't have to be personality trait. Weaknesses are very context dependent. It might have been when you struggled to perform in a task because you felt pressured or you came across an obstacle and you didn't quite have the skill yet to do that. So that was a weakness. So it's not so much that you lack empathy or you lack patience or you lack a certain virtue. It's more so that when I found myself in the situation, I tended to get really pressured and wrapped up into it and people would have seen me in this light. They might have seen me as overbearing or timid or not opening up and so I think it's really important to brainstorm to think of all these contexts and scenarios where you did have some problems and how you did identify them became self-aware of them and improved and jot them down that's the first step so the second step that I think you should really do and it's a bit of a nerve-wracking one because it involves you to get some constructive criticism by others is to go to your close friends and your families and just ask them what do you think I can improve on what do you think my weaknesses are and maybe also ask them what your strengths are because by getting direct feedback by those close to you, they'll spot things that you don't necessarily know or that you didn't know that you did or it's a habit that um, people overlook and they just like, oh, that's, that's just you. Like, you know, I'm not gonna judge you on that. So I think it's important to get feedback um, and hear from different colleagues 
not just not just your close friends, but also some of your friends from work, or if you play a sport, maybe some of your teammates, because in different contexts, people are going to think different things about you. And it can give you a feel of how you interact in different scenarios, and it'll really help you grow and figure out more about your own self. And finally, think of times when you might have failed, or you might have not got that result that you needed to, and have a think about why that happened. Were there any things that you did that led to it? Was there any weaknesses that you had that you could have improved on? So think about successes, think about failures, talk to your friends and family and get their opinion on it and try brainstorm ideas. And once you've done all this, you, you get a really holistic um, view of yourself and things that you might not have been aware of, you're now aware of. found your weakness and it's not a strength in disguise and it's a genuine weakness that you have and you've obviously made an effort to improve on. So when delivering your response, don't be shy, be honest, be expressive, create a story for what that weakness was. So when you talk about your weaknesses, you just want to touch on it briefly. You want to state the context about when you became aware of it, you want to briefly describe it, but then you want to go into methods about how it affected others and so what strategies have you employed to improve on this? And what are you doing currently to make sure that you're a better version of yourself? And that's the main thing. They wanna see growth, they wanna see changes, they wanna see reflective practice. Because people who keep doing the wrong thing, it becomes a habit that you can't break. So by being self-aware and being vulnerable and saying that you had this weakness and what are the steps and what are the examples and what are the things that you've done to obviously get from this place to this better place? And I think that's a really positive thing to show to an interviewer. So the most important thing when you're answering this question is to focus on personal growth and personal improvements. So for a lot of us, we might get wrapped up in things that we've done in the past and it's this whole rear view mirror sort of way of thinking where we're looking back into how we interacted and to things that we've done in the past and think that that's the setting stone for how we can be in the future. But what the interviewer wants to see is that you're looking back but it's not affecting you moving forward, you're always looking forward, you're always growing and you're going in different paths and you're not stuck by what's behind you. You only look behind you to check how far you've grown and I think showing that mentality in your response and the weaknesses that you've overcome, that's a huge positive thing that the interviewer wants to hear. In a growth mindset, we can develop our abilities through hard work and perseverance and this view creates a love of learning and a resilience that is essential for accomplishments to be made later on. It keeps things fresh, we make sure that we're not in a rut, encourages active work engagement, it improves our social EQ, and it develops our creative thinking skills because if we're always on our feet, looking at ways that we can improve and how we can adapt to changes in the environments because there's gonna be so much change in a medical career in the 40, the 60, 70 years that you're working. So it needs to show that you can identify problems and not be stagnant and always be refreshing your ideas and your practice because things will change, technology will change, the approaches to medicine will change. And you need to show how to the interviewer that you've identified areas of improvement, adapted to the change and, and made a positive influence moving forward. Although this is just an interview question, I think there's so much more to it. It's a way to discover qualities within us and to evaluate why we've chosen medicine as a vocation and why we're suited to a role as a doctor. So by answering this question honestly and showing how you've grown, it will give you better clarity to make better decisions moving forward and to reflect on failures so that you'll be the best doctor to your patients and also to be the best person in all aspects of your life, to your friends, to your family, to your social life, to your academic life. And if you give the question the thought it requires, your response will capture the interviewer. It won't just be an answer to a common interview question. It'll be a snapshot of your personal growth, growth that will be invaluable throughout your career. If you have an interview coming up, very best of luck. If you stick to your gut and be yourself, you'll do more than amazing. If you had any more questions, please leave a comment down below, or you can feel free to direct message me through my Instagram if that's easier for you. Thanks so much for watching and sticking around to the end of the video. Until next time, this is Sebastian, stay sharp.